Hello everyone, um, I'm Laurent Bernay, I'm staff engineer at Datadog and I'm very happy to be here today to share how we do service discovery in our infrastructure and the challenges we face. I'm going to do a very quick introduction on Datadog if you don't know who we are. So we're a SaaS-based monitoring company. Uh, we do metrics, APM and logs and other products such as synthetics and many other products in the works. Uh, we have thousands of customers, hundreds of integrations, and just to give you an idea of scale, because this is where part of the challenges we have are, are coming from, we process trillions of data points per day, and to do that, we have tens of thousands of VMs. And to make it even more complex, we are migrating from virtual machines to Kubernetes, which makes it more, even more challenging, as we're going to see just after. Before diving into service discovery and the challenges we face, um, just a quick intro on how we've been using uh, HashiCorp software uh, for quite a long time now. So first of all, um, we use Terraform and Packer heavily. Uh, so we use Packer to build all our base images, and we use Terraform to configure all our cloud resources across different providers, such as AWS and GCP. And today, we have thousands of Terraform files, and it represents tens of thousands of lines of Terraform code. So we really, really rely heavily on, on these tools. Um, we also use Vault pretty heavily for secret management. And I'm just going to focus on Kubernetes to just give you an idea of uh, size and, and scale. So in our Kubernetes cluster today, we use Vault uh, to, to get secrets and to provide PKI services. So all our control plane services uh, retrieve certificates using Vault. And as you can see, we, we do like 100 certificate signature per, per hour or something. And we also heavily read secrets uh, from Vault inside Kubernetes because every time a port starts, it's authenticating using uh, its Kubernetes service account, getting a token from, Vo from Vault, and then getting secrets. So let's, let's dive now into, into service discovery. So as I was saying before, um, we have both uh, virtual machines and Kubernetes clusters. And this makes service discovery very challenging. So this is a quick representation of what we have. So before Kubernetes, we had um, a large set of virtual machines, like tens of thousands. And service discovery was local to this set of machines. And now we are migrating to Kubernetes, so we're introducing Kubernetes clusters. And because we have such a huge scale, we cannot have a single Kubernetes cluster, so we have multiple ones. And also, we're providing our services in different regions. So we have these different infrastructure of each of the machines, Kubernetes clusters, across different cloud providers and different regions. And this raises quite a bunch of challenges. So the first one, for instance, is imagine your workload uh, running in cluster two, so the B uh, hexagon in the, in the diagram, and you want to reach a service that's on a VM. In that case, you can't rely on Kubernetes services, which is what we use inside the cluster. So we need a solution to find C, for instance, uh, to find A, sorry, for instance. Another example would be you're in a, you're in a VM in cluster in the classic VMs, and you want to reach a service inside Kubernetes. So for instance, you want to say, where, where is C? And you can see that like normal service discovery inside the VM is not going to help you find a service that's running inside Kubernetes. And we also have the issue between clusters, of course, because when you're inside a Kubernetes cluster, you have all these nice features for service discovery built in into Kubernetes, but it doesn't allow you to do cross-cluster. And, and even worse, sometimes you have services that are deployed across different clusters. And this is the B example on this diagram, where when you want to reach B from A, you're actually reaching services that are, that are spanning two different Kubernetes clusters. In addition to that, um, sometimes we have requirements when we need uh, encryption and authorization, which makes it even more challenging. In addition to these features, we have very big scalability challenge. So just to give you an idea of the what, what we need to, to be able to achieve. We need to be able to address thousands of services, tens of thousands of nodes, and hundreds of thousands of pods. So this is large figures. And this is very tricky to, ma to make it work. So the first thing is we need the control plane to be, to be efficient. 
because as you can imagine, if you're distributing this topology, this complex topology information across all these nodes, uh, you want it to be, to be fast. So for instance, if, a set, if an application is going down, you need the endpoint to be updated very fast all over your infra. So in, you need, I mean, to be fast, like a few seconds. And also, you need the traffic uh, generated by a single event of this type to be small enough not to overload the control plane. And finally, you can't get all the topology information on all nodes, because otherwise, it's going to consume too much memory. Imagine if you have um, an envoy running on, on each node, and this envoy has a full view of the whole topology. You can imagine how much memory it's going to use. In addition to control plane efficiency, we also need the data plane to be efficient. And by this, I mean we need the overhead of during service-to-service -service communication to be low enough so it doesn't impact our application. And as you can imagine, in our case, the volume of traffic we get is, is pretty heavy. So here is our, our approach, how we've done it in the past, and how we're doing it today, and what we plan to do in the future. So before migrating to Kubernetes, what we were doing is we were deploying a console agent on every node. And so all, every services were discovering themselves using, using console. And that was working pretty fine, even if it was, it was sometimes challenging given the scale we were running at. In Kubernetes clusters, we use Kubernetes services, which is a logical and simple way to do it. However, we also need to solve the issues I was mentioning before. So for instance, we need to address services that are running on instances. And, and for this, what we, what we do is we use console DNS. So we run console agents inside Kubernetes, and we use console DNS to risk services running on VMs. But we also need to solve cluster-to-cluster -cluster communication and VM-to-cluster communications. And to do that, the way we do it today is we rely on ingresses and DNS. So basically, we publish DNS services and cloud provider DNS, and we access these services, and we use that as, as ingress. So it, it kind of works, but it doesn't solve all the issues I was, uh, I was mentioning before. Um, there's no authentication, no encryption. And using DNS this way to do service discovery is not very efficient, because propagation time can be a bit long. So <clears throat> in the future, what we plan to do is to do service mesh to solve all these cross-cluster communication and VM to cluster communication. And, and we're really, really looking forward at all the features uh, Mitchell announced before, because they should be able to help us solve these issues I was, I was mentioning. So in conclusion, um, as you grow and as your topology gets more complicated, service discovery is getting pretty tricky. And so we really believe that service mesh is a good answer to this question, and that we're really looking forward into new solutions and efficient solution to, to this problem. <laughs>